Hey everybody, it's Matthew. You're actually coming, uh, you're visiting me from my kitchen, my, my apartment, but my kitchen. And I actually thought today we would make some salt flower creatures. Now, I say creatures because what I'm going to make is maybe going to be maybe some sort of little character or little creature. But salt flower, you can actually use this to make ornaments if you want to decorate your tree or if you want to make maybe a little window hanging ornament. It's a great way actually, I think I might try it too, it's a great way of actually making uh, handprints. So kind of like when you make handprints in clay. And the great thing is, look it, it only takes three ingredients that not maybe everyone, but I think a lot of us might have already at home. So, we're going to learn how to make salt flour today and make so many amazing creations. So let's come along and let's see what amazing things we can learn. Now, the first thing we need is to get all of our ingredients together. So we have here our flour, right? A great big tub of flour. We have salt. And our third ingredient, remember one, two, three, that's all it takes, is water. That's why we've got our measuring cup, and we've got our water. Look at, ta-da, that's all it takes, one, two, three ingredients. So first, we start with our dry ingredients, so our flour and our salt. So we take two cups, see right on the line, two cups of flour, and we're gonna oh, add it into our bowl. Ding, 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 ding. Pretty simple. Next, it's one cup of salt. Yes, it is a lot of salt. Let's go pour, 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 pour in the salt. And I have one cup of salt, so I'm adding my cup of salt right on in to our flour. And I'm just going to grab a whisk. You can grab a spoon, a fork, anything that you want to stir it in, just so we mix the flour and the salt together. Next comes our water. Okay. Now we've got our cold water. We've got one cup of cold water. So, just to go back, it is two cups of all-purpose flour, one cup of salt, and one cup of cold water. And our cold water, we're just going to mix in a little bit at a time. So we don't get all of our, our dough all sticky all at once, but we can slowly mix it in a little bits at a time. So I've got my wooden spoon here and we stir, 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 stir. Now look at, see, we've got all of our, all of our flour, our water, our salt is all combined into this nice dough. Now, if you added a little bit extra water, Matthew added just a little touch of extra water, and then he found that it, he added a little too much, so he had to sprinkle in a little bit more flour. Just enough that, again, we don't want it super gooey and sticky, but we want a nice heavy dough, right? Something where, look, I can stick the spoon right up in it. ta -da. Now it's time that we have to get our hands in there and we have to knead the dough. So we need to rub and stretch and stir with our fingers, with our hands, just to make sure everything's nice and worked in. So we need to do that for 10 whole minutes. So we knead the dough, right? We make it into like a nice big ball, we squish it, we roll it, just like when we were making our bannock bread. If you remember, we have to knead our dough, get it all ready. 
So we, we're going to work it, we're going to knead it, we're going to roll it around <clears throat> for 10 minutes, and after that 10 minutes, then it has to rest. So now we're going to let that sit. We're going to let that sit, we're going to let it rest, you stay there, don't move, and we're going to let it sit for 20 minutes. Let's come over to our fancy oven here, and let's set our time for 20 minutes. Phew! <clears throat> well, I'm glad we waited, but now our dough is all ready to work with. Ooh, there's my oven, it's ready for baking. So, I actually divided my dough into three balls, because I wanted to try a couple of different things. Now. One thing I looked at was making a handprint, and I kind of talked about that. So I rolled out the dough using my rolling pin, right? Roll, roll, roll. And now I'm going to stick my hand oh, right in there. I'm going to give it a good push. Give it a good push. Wow. Wow, look at that. That's my handprint there. So I'm going to then carefully pick that up put it onto my baking tray, which I put some parchment paper on. Again, just like my salt, I buy my parchment paper from the dollar store. You know, I go through so much of it sometimes with uh, some of my baking that, you know, I don't really want to buy really super expensive stuff. And this works just great. I love how well it works. So I'm going to carefully pick up my handprint, put it down on my tray. Okay, another idea that I thought I would try Again, I flattened out another one of the dough balls, and I'm going to take just a butter knife, and I thought I would actually cut out a print of a cat, because I love cats. Oh, I think everyone by now knows Matthew loves cats. So let's see if I can try this. Now this, this is a design that I'm doing. I'm thinking of what a shape of a cat looks like, right? I've got the, the cat ears, got my, my cat head. Let's give it, let's cut that away. And it's not going to be a perfect cat, but I'm giving it a little bit of a tail. Now again, it might be so much fun that we just want to try out just doing this, you know, using our hands instead of using knives, but Matthew's going to try out his cat. There we go. So I'm going to put that onto my pan and try the next thing. Now we've got our salt dough creatures, our salt dough things, our, our creations in the oven. It's going to go in for two whole hours. So it's going to go in for two whole hours. If I look really quickly, there they are. There they are in the oven. And so we put it in the oven at 250 degrees and they just sit and they bake and we don't bug them at all. We don't bother them. So instead we wait. And we wait. Ooh, dinosaurs. And we wait, and go outside, get some fresh air, and we wait. Oh, Ooh. and we keep waiting. Two hours takes a long time to wait. All right, look at our, our salt dough creatures, our creations just came out of the oven. Now, we do need to let these cool down completely before we can paint them if we want to paint them. I know I'm going to paint mine. Oh, wow. So I've got them resting on a drying rack. If not, you can just leave them on the pan, but they need to cool down completely because they are still hot to the touch, still hot. So it's going to take a little bit more time, but now we just wait and then we can decorate. Yes. All right, now our salt dough creations have fully dried. They've cooled down. So 
Matthew's already begun painting. So here we got our cat. I decided to paint it a black cat because when I was a child, I had a black cat. So I thought I'd do that. Let's see, I've got my, my Pokemon over here. I kind of, as I was shaping it, I was like, hey, you know what? This kind of reminds me of Metapod. So that's what I figured I'd do. My handprint over here, wow, turned out pretty nice. So I painted a dark blue around the outside. Maybe I'll do a nice light blue. And then we got our little heart over here. The great thing is, when you're all finished with painting them, then if you get like a craft sealer, like Mod Podge or something, then you can actually coat it in that, and that will help to preserve the paint, but it'll also help to preserve the salt dough, right? So, thank you so much. I've had so much fun. And yeah, I just, I really hope that you have as much fun making this salt dough craft as I did. I'm, I cannot wait because now I'm going to have these creations for days and days, months and months, and years and years. And I can give them as gifts. I can keep them for myself and hang them up as decorations or just keep them on my, on my wall. I can hang them up on my shelf. So many amazing things. And again, three ingredients, right? Three ingredients. I can do this again and again and again.